So as discussed in our previous video, many modern handguns will come standard with additional grip panels as accessories inside that box. These different sizes of back straps are intended so that you can fine tune the depth of the grip. When I say the depth of the grip, that's as it's measured from the front strap to the back strap so it better fits the size of your hand. That's important for a multitude of reasons. It's not just a comfort issue, it's an accuracy issue. In the context of self-defense, you've got enough working against you at that moment in your life. I don't want your grip to be one of those things that is going to throw your accuracy off. In this context, I'm not referring to missing the tin ring on a paper target. I'm talking about potentially missing the target you're shooting at and putting innocent third parties at risk. So that is the importance of having a good grip and using all the fundamentals properly. Ask the sales clerk if that gun comes with additional back straps as part of the accessories in the box. Unfortunately, not all sales associates are really fluent with different makes and models of guns, so you may run across one here and there that don't know how to install those back straps. So that is part of the importance of you watching this video so that when you show up to the gun store, if it has additional grip panels and the person behind the counter doesn't know how to install them, then you can work through that problem set with them. Or if you already own a gun that has interchangeable back straps and the instruction manual isn't quite clear on how to do it, now you have a visual aid. There's a variety of ways that different manufacturers will use to install or swap out these interchangeable back straps. I'm going to show you two examples in this video. We're going to use a Glock 19 Generation 5 as well as a Smith & Wesson M&P. This will give you a decent baseline for the techniques that are used across the spectrum of different guns you may be looking at. All right, let's get to it. Let's start with the Glock 19. So as we open up the box, the first thing we're going to do is inspect the gun to make sure it's clear. If there's a magazine installed, we're going to remove that and set it off to the side. We're going to lock the slide to the rear and do our three-point inspection. The chamber's clear, the magazine is clear, the gun is clear. So with this manufacturer, it comes with four additional grip panels. It comes with a medium and a large that are just flat on the back, and it comes with a medium and a large grip panel that have that beaver tail kind of design to it. The utility of the one with the beaver tail is if we're having difficulty eliminating that air gap between the web of the hand and the back of the gun, then that additional beaver tail design may fit the bill for helping snug that fit. So to discern which is medium and which is large, if you look at the bottom of the grip panel, you'll see an M on the medium and an L on the large. Or for easier reference, if you have failing eyesight, the medium one is going to be smooth on the inside and the large one is going to have some ribs kind of uh, reinforcing the, uh, the web of it. So that's how you're going to tell if it's a medium or large. I'm going to encourage you to start with the medium if you just need to fine tune it a little bit. And if that doesn't seem to work out, then remove that one, put the large one on, and then see if that snugs things up. For those models of Glocks that come with additional grip panels, that would be what the standard accessory package looks like. Next, let's look at this little plastic tree doohickey that those panels were attached to when you pull them out of the accessory box. You'll notice it has a long punch pin that is for removing the short pin that fills the gap of the hole when there's no panels installed. And also you'll find the longer pin that is hooked right here is stowed. So we're gonna take that off. We're gonna take the cleared handgun, we're gonna lay it down in our workspace, and we're gonna use that punch pin that's on that tree, and we're going to push out the pin that is currently installed. Now when we're grasping this thing, the closer down to the tip that you grasp it, the more stability it's gonna have. It's not gonna flex and bend and then get all wonky on you. And then once you get it started, you should be able to just push that pin right out. Now we're going to immediately take that pin that came out of the gun and we're going to take and snap it back into that little retaining slot so we don't lose that thing. Since I already know that the large back strap with the beaver tail is what perfects my grip size on the gun, that's the one I'm going to demonstrate with. So for the Glock, we're going to begin by putting the bottom of that grip panel down at the bottom of the magazine well and then we're going to rotate that panel in and then with our thumb we're going to push so that the beaver tail snaps into place. With one hand we're going to hold that together. You'll see how those are all lined up and then I'm going to push the pin in, get it started 
And if I need to, then I can use the edge of that little stowage tree reinforced with my thumb to push that in the rest of the way. Now make sure that we flip the gun over and make sure that that pin is actually coming all the way through so that it secures the left and the right side of that grip panel. You don't want it getting wonky on you. All right, so once that grip panel is installed, we can again try it on for size and see if it perfected the grip. If not, if you started with the medium, then move up to the large. If you started with the medium and the large without the beaver tail, and you still have that air gap, then try the medium or the large with the beaver tail. Once we are happy with the fit of the gun, we're gonna put all the pieces back together on that tree and then put it back into the box so we don't lose anything if we've got to swap things out later. All right, that is for the Glock. Let's move on to the Smith & Wesson. For the Smith & Wesson m &P, we're going to, again, begin by removing the gun from the case. We're going to clear it to make sure it's safe to handle. We're going to remove that magazine if there's one already in the gun, lock the slide to the rear, inspect. The chamber is clear, magazine is clear, the gun is clear. We're going to set that down. Inside the accessory box, again, we have additional magazines that it comes with. And here we're going to find that it has two additional grip panels. Typically, the small grip panel is already going to be installed at the factory on the gun, and then we'll have a medium and a large. To know which is which, again, it is labeled on the inside, medium and large, and it's also quite obvious because one is noticeably larger than the other. We're gonna set those down momentarily. In order to remove the back strap that is already installed in the gun, it's a little bit different process than with the Glock. Whereas the Glock, there's a punch pin that you have to knock out in order to swap those panels out and then reinstall the larger push pin. This, we're going to have a retaining rod that runs up through the length of the grip. To remove the back strap that is currently installed on the gun, we're going to look down here at the base of the magazine well. We're going to take that little thing and turn it half a turn and then wiggle it out. If it's brand new and you haven't done this before, it might be quite stiff, so you might have to work that a little bit. But once you get it out, you'll see it's just a little metal rod with a plastic handle on it. We're going to set that down because we need that here in a second. Now, as opposed to the Glock, to where you kind of start at the top and pull it down because it kind of hinges at the bottom, for the Smith & Wesson, it's the opposite. It hinges at the top, so we're going to pull out from the bottom of that grip panel. It's going to just pivot out, and then we're going to set that down. So the method that Smith & Wesson uses to attach these grip panels You'll note that just below the beaver tail, towards the top of the grip, there's a little notch right there. That notch is where this tab at the top of the grip panel is going to fit inside that first, and then you're going to pivot it into place. To make it so this gun fits my hand size better, I'm going to remove the small back strap, and I'm going to install the large one. I'm going to start by taking that tab that is at the top of the grip panel, and I'm going to put it inside the notch that's at the top of the grip. It's going to pivot into place, and then I'm going to hold it into place while I replace that retaining rod. Remember when we insert that pin, it needs to go in at 90 degrees, and then we're going to turn it so that it is flush with the magazine well. That should install the grip, and it's nice and secure. And then we're going to take and again put that gun high up into the web of the hand, grasp it just like we discussed in the previous videos and make sure that it fits our hand size adequately. If after trying the small, medium, and large back strap, it still doesn't fit your hand size well, then that is not a good selection for you. You need to look at a different make and or model. All right, the last thing we're gonna do here, of course, is we're going to take whatever leftover back straps we have, we're gonna put them back into the accessory case. That way we don't lose them if we ever need to swap them out for somebody else's different hand size. So that was two different examples of how those grip panel accessories are interchangeable for two different manufacturers of guns. If you have a gun that has interchangeable back straps and it's not one of those two brands, then I encourage you to look at the owner's manual to figure out how it is that they install so you get it done correctly. It's only gonna add maybe a quarter of an inch or so to the depth of the web. It's just for fine tuning the grip. I've done other videos that do the deep dive in how to acquire that grip when you're trying on a gun to make sure it fits your hand size. I'm not going to bog this video down with it. The links are going to be down below for your convenience. If you haven't seen them, go ahead and check those out after this one and in case you want to review it before going to the gun store.
Make sure you find that gun that's going to fit your hand size appropriately, the one that you're going to practice with and carry every single day. If you got any questions or comments, feel free to throw them down below. If you haven't already done so, like, subscribe, and until next time, God bless you and stay safe.